In early September 2014, I was the main speaker at the African Renewal Pastors and Leaders Conference, the fourth time I have come to Western Kenya to speak at this conference. It was held in Longus Estate, a slum south of Eldoret, Kenya. It is the second largest and poorest slum in all Kenya, second only to the Kibera slum in Nairobi. As I rode through the streets of Longus, I realized the huge needs, both material and spiritual, in these people whom God loves. The conference was organized and hosted by Word of Life Harvest Church, center of a strong Christian movement in western Kenya. The church and movement are led by Bishop Chris Barasa Lusweti. When I first met him, he was the pastor of a 100-member church. Now his congregation numbers over 600, and he is bishop over about 80 churches, 60 of which he helped to start. He has a heart for training pastors both for these new churches as well as pastors of churches from various denominations in his area. This conference drew leaders from all over East Africa, Western Kenya, Eastern Uganda, and as far away as Tanzania. As I consider the highlights of the conference for me, I see three things. The first is worship. When Africans worship, their music is full of joy and dancing. We were privileged to have a number of singers at the conference who were recording artists in Kenya. There was also a skilled dance team of young churches in Katali and Kisumu. As the week went on, several local dancers joined them, learning their moves and enjoying the Lord along with them. God was dealing with me about my own lack of participation in dancing in previous conferences. My own pride had kept me from dancing, but once I began to join in, it became part of the joy of the moment before the Lord. Dealing with pride was one of the second highlights of the conference for me, and one I hadn't expected. Yes, one of my messages on grace was from the text in 1 Peter, humble yourselves because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. But on the second day of the conference, God was dealing strongly with me that he wanted me to bring a word on exalting servants over the master, a problem I sensed at the conference and a problem we see in Western countries as well. God told me to begin the message on my knees. So I knelt on the platform and my excellent translator, Harun, knelt next to me. As I began to speak, tears came to my eyes and started rolling down my cheeks. God was speaking powerfully in English and then through Swahili. My translator and I stayed on our knees for the entire message. And at the close of that word, everyone in the building was on their knees before the Lord. God was truly at work among us. The third highlight for me was the rich topic of grace that we explored over the five days of the conference. God had given me this topic for my Kenyan brothers and sisters more than a year and a half before the conference. But as I prepared for the conference with a comprehensive look at grace in the New Testament, I began to see how the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is the underpinning of the entire Christian faith and of our walk before the Lord. Grace is God's favor. Nema nikibani Where it is not earned or deserved. 
ambacho mtu hajakifanyia kazi ama hakistahili. Say that with me. Sema hayo neno pamoja nami. Grace is God's favor. Neema ni kibali cha Mungu. It is an entirely free gift. One we're never expected to or possibly can repay. The key verse for the conference, one I asked each pastor to memorize in his or her language, was Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. After laying that foundation, I brought messages on the implications of grace for our lives. Grace is greater than our sin. Grace in sanctification. God doesn't cut us off when we sin. Rather, he treats us as sons and daughters, disciplining us where necessary so we'll grow up to be like our Father. Then, grace brings victory over sin. I explained eight strategies to help us resist temptation and put a break on sin's power in our lives. Then, grace to forgive those who hurt us. Grace in our suffering. Grace that overflows with generosity towards the Lord and those in need. Cultivating an attitude of graciousness that characterizes our lives. I closed the conference on Saturday with an extended teaching on spiritual gifts, gifts from the Holy Spirit they are very much the result of grace. The Greek word for grace is charis. The Greek word for gifts is charisma. Gifts graciously given, not based on what we deserve, but dependent entirely upon the will of the giver. This teaching concluded with an extended time of questions and answers. The closer I got to the conference, the more I began to realize that God wanted this to happen. Over 75 individuals gave money to provide for my travel and for the expenses of the conference. 45% of the funds came from outside the U.S. Over 300 people from around the world promised to pray regularly for the Holy Spirit to have His freedom among us. And as the conference progressed, attendance totaled over 400 pastors and leaders each day, men and women who would return to their homes to carry God's message to their own congregations. Sunday was a special day when Bishop Chris's congregation gathered outside to rejoice over God's provision of a new building. I had the privilege of cutting the ribbon and praying the dedication prayer. Sunday morning worship was wonderful, led by the congregation's own song leader, Lydia. As I stood before the Lord and prepared to preach, waves of joy broke over me. All around me were the sounds and colors of Africans worshiping the Lord they loved. I was witness to the wonder of what God has done in this gathering of believers halfway around the world from my home, many of them my friends. What an immense privilege is mine. Thank you. Thank you.